Hello, welcome to this new Badi tutorial installing or updating your firmware on your Badi electronic board. This tutorial is for members having a Badi V2, which is Wi Fi based ESP8266 controller. What you need for this tutorial is basically to install VS Code plus the platform IO extension. We'll go through this during the tutorial. What you need is to check if you have a firmware on your Mac or PC installed on your computer. So if you look at the description of the video, you're going to find a link to the website listing the different drivers for Mac or PC. Just install the one that corresponds to your computer. What you need for this tutorial is as well an Android cable which is data transfer enabled. If you take a cable coming from a charger for example, Usually that kind of cable are only powering up device. There are no data transfer enabled. So please make sure you have a genuine Android cable, which is data transfer enabled. Ask a friend to borrow one if you don't have one yourself. What you obviously need as well is a Badi Wi-Fi electronic board, which is a V2 version. Please ask question to the community in the Facebook group if you're not sure. So if you're ready, we can start. The first thing to check is to go to Badi GitHub. So it's a repository you can access using any web browser like Chrome or Explorer, github.com slash Badi dash lab. And here is Badi repository, Badi makers edition. And look up for embedded source code and Badi v3. And here are two files that our interest for us, the main.cpp and the platform io.ini. Those two files are going to be used for the next steps of the procedure. So here is the main.cpp file. So it's a basic C++ file. And the other file is a platform io.ini, which is basically a file that summarizes the properties of your project. So it's basically listing the dependency of the libraries if you have to fix a version in order to avoid to have interface breach. It's also listing the kind of environment and framework you're working in, like Arduino in our case. So if you're ready, what you need to install is VS Code. So you may access VS Code using a browser as well. It's free. And you have to install it. So here I'm using a Mac, but if you have a PC, you may install the archive, which is dedicated to PC, obviously. So that should be a no brainer. Once you have installed the VS Code application, what you need to do is to run this application. And inside this, you will have to install an extension. So if you click on the tab on the left, the kind of Lego icon, this one. Yeah. If you click on this, you will have to install the platform IO extension. So what you see on my screen, I have the platform IEO IDE already installed. So it's normal that you see that it's already installed. And the only option I have is to uninstall. But in your case, you will have to install. It's going to ask you if you want to install C, C++ dependencies. You may say yes and accept as well. So once you have installed everything, you may restart your VS Code. And when you restart VS Code, you will find the PIO Home invite like this. So once done, you can create a project. So I'm going to go full screen and create a new project. So you put whatever project name you want here in my case, I'm going to call it tuto Betty tuto. Yeah, I'm going to select my board. So please pay attention to what I'm going to write node MCU and ODE MCU. And what you have to select is node MCU 1.0 ESP 12 E module. Select this one and framework Arduino. That's a standard that's not going to change. So once we have done this, what you need to do is finish. Put whatever project name you want. Finish, it's going to create 
your project and you may click on the src file so youtube eddy is a new project if you have a look at src folder yeah just click on it and you will find the main.cpp file and the platform io.ini files so if it rings the bell that's normal it's because that's two files that we were mentioning in our github so um what you need is to just copy paste the content of the platform io.ini file in the github into the platform io.ini file in your vs code yeah some people may say well you may use some git comments in order to do these operations uh, agreed that's not the best elegant way to proceed but here I'm not making a tutorial on GitHub. I'm just um, showing you the basic procedure by copying, pasting the code and replacing everything. So you may follow this tutorial using the different steps I show you. And it's going to work this way as well. Um, so yeah, this, that's, that's for the platform io.ini file. So this line, let control and there is a number behind it which specifies the different versions on which we want the libraries to be called from the compiler and that's important because um, Badi embeds different libraries open source libraries and some of the libraries in more recent versions may have different interfaces so it's important that we maintain a certain level of libraries if we want to avoid some breach of interface so once we've done the platform io.ini file, we're going to do the same thing with the main.cpp file. So we're going to look up the file into um, the body GitHub main.cpp file. So you got all the content. So you may copy everything okay, from the very first line to the very end. So you copy and you paste and replace everything you got in your main.cpp file into the VS Code. So here is the entire file. It's a big monolithic file. Some people may say, well, you need to have a library .h, body .h library. It's more elegant. Yes, you're definitely right. Um, we'll do this in the next steps, uh, next uh, releases of the code, obviously. But having one file makes it really simple if you want to uh, do the kind of operation we're doing right now. So main.cpp file, platform io.ini, those are the two files required to um, compile the code with Batty, but that's not sufficient. We will need to install some libraries because as I mentioned previously, Batty is referring to and using functions from um, third party open source libraries to make different components work like the LED display in, in the front of the robot, for example. So in order to install those libraries, you need to go to PyIO Home, the platform IO menu, and you go to the libraries tab. And here you look up for library LED control, L-E-D-C-O-N-T-R-O-L, right? You look up for this library in the registry and you're going to find the lit control by Erhard Falle. You need to click on that and you must take the version 1.0.6 and install it. Okay, the release number is really important. I was mentioning the interface interface breach. You need to um, get the accurate version number for your library. So after you install the lit control library, you need to install async, A, S, Y, and C libraries so you have two libraries um, to install so look up the one that is of interest for, for us not this one yes this one is important esp async tcp by mr goshkov and another one which is esp async um server we're gonna find the right name take the version 1.2.0 for esp async tcp Okay, we're gonna install another one from ESP Async. So we go back to the registry, look up the Async ASYNC, 
and then second one we need to we need to get is the ESP async web server from Mr. Goshkov still and take the version 1.0 and install it all right if you've done this properly you may have all your files and your libraries needed to compile compile your code that means you're going to transform all of this code and libraries called by the compiler into understandable language for a machine for a controller so what you need to click is a small icon at the bottom left of the screen this one build so just click on it and the log terminal here is going to show you the different steps and to show you what's happening you may see different warnings in yellow that's not a problem it doesn't prevent from uh, the compiler to finish the work properly so if you've done the previous task properly you shall get a success at the end of the compilation uh, routine so I'm gonna wait a few moments till the end till you got a success green flag success all right so if you are struggling to get this working um, just contact the community on the Facebook group or on the discord forum and ask you questions you gotta find a lot of members who succeed to upgrade their body and install the firmware uh, we are here to help so don't hesitate so once we've done this it will be time to upload your code uh, on your electronic board so the first thing to check is that you have installed the firmware of your board you see that if you go to the device tab of your platform IO menu here are listed the different communication ports that platform IO is taking into account and if you connect the USB cable of your board by refreshing you are going to see these communication ports if you don't see any communication port appearing a new communication port available after connecting the USB cable that means you have a driver problem you need to install your driver by checking out the link in the description of the video so know that you have the communication port visible you don't have driver issue you go to the main CPP file and you have to click on the small icon the arrow that shows the right direction and you click on the button and here you're gonna upload your machine code to your electronic board so as usual you will see in the terminal different steps of the process it's connecting good news and writing down and you have a small percentage which shows you the progress of the operation uh, meanwhile you may check your electronic board and you will see the little blue light which flashes that means that it's receiving data and processing so you will wait till the end of the process 100 percent and then afterwards we're going to do some stuff success that means that it worked so if you click on the little uh, connector icon here you're gonna see some text written down in the terminal and those are the log files which are generated and written down by Betty electronic word so it's text which enables to um, to show you that your electronic board is waiting is working properly it shows you the different steps and gives you an understanding of how your code actually works and here you see that um, your buddy has tried to connect um, Wi-Fi network with the society buddy dash init buddy 1234 which is the which is factory settings for a hotspot connection since the release 3 of the firmware buddy is uh, looking up uh, some Wi-Fi network around and trying to connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot from a phone with those factory settings and then we've seen that after 15 seconds he didn't find any Wi-Fi network around and then he decided to uh, to start up and to start with uh, access point mode 
and uh, using the Bally SSID. And if you look at the different uh, Wi-Fi network available, you will see the Bally Wi-Fi network available. So that's actually your electronic board currently, which is um, exposing an access point, a Wi-Fi access point with a Bally uh, SSID and no password. So here you can see in the logs that there is a new station connected uh, to the Bally Wi-Fi network. It's actually my computer which is uh, connected to the access point. That's going to be useful for the next step of the tutorial where uh, if you want to adjust the servo motor's position which is uh, required during the mounting process, um, you need to send web comments through the Wi-Fi network in order to uh, adjust and configure your body. Servo motor's position, network parameters, etc. But everything is detailed in the next tutorial. So that's all for this time. Congratulations, you've made it. As usual, if you have any question, you may ask your questions on the Baddy Facebook group or on our Discord server. Community is here to help. Thanks very much, guys. Enjoy. Cheers. See you in the next tutorial.